speakies and some are being, oh, this is not working. Uh, some are being served off of my laptop. So uh, please pass it around. I don't have enough for everybody, not the USB keys. So please copy it and share with your friends. I'm sorry? All right, now it's out of my hands. So. Yeah. All right, if you have the Susie Little Cloud, you just pull on one little end and it comes out. And if it doesn't work, bend it a little bit and it gets looser. Here. No, it should come out. Uh, yes, yes, yes. You either need either a key or the tar file. You don't need both. They should they should be the same. I think. I'm sorry. Oh. Um, if you're having technical issues with USB key. Oh, okay, so there's, there was like a little thing that, uh, okay. all right, I don't know that we can get it out of this one anymore. Is that one broken? Uh, yeah, strong fingers. All right, uh, to get my, to my URL, please get on Razor 5 or Razor 24 network. All right. Uh oh. Can you get to it, Daniel? Does, can other people get to it? If you do get on one of the Razor networks, those are just internal uh, to this room. It will not go out to internet. So uh, the the format for today is, you know, this this these were actually originally two separate talks that were submitted. Um, they're actually very complimentary. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, Razor the first half of the session about how to uh, use it to provision hardware, uh, how that's set up, and we're using it to set up OpenStack with Chef. Uh, and, and we'll have a, a break kind of in between because this is two hours, 20 minutes. Um, you know, we don't have to be the whole time, but uh, we probably will eat up a large chunk of that. Um, so so Eggle's going, going to handle the first half. Uh, she's more familiar with the Razor side of things. And then I'll talk about uh, the cookbooks that Rackspace is using uh, for their uh, their private chef product, or private chef product, their private OpenStack product, uh, which is all open source. So uh, that's kind of the format. So I'm going to be down here, mostly quiet. So yeah, there's our agenda with with a break. Oh, do that. Yeah. Oh, you want me, you want me to talk about sure. this now? Uh, I think we can start officially. No, I was. I... All right. Okay, we'll, we'll cover this later. All right, so if you got in late, uh, I am going to be, or if you want to follow along, you will need a Razor appliance, which is just a little VM I created that, can, that will work with either VirtualBox or Fusion. Uh, for Fusion, you will need the extension pack. Um, there are a lot of USB keys going around. It's probably not enough for everybody. It, you can try downloading from my laptop. You need to be on Razor 5 or Razor 24 internal network. This network will not let you get out to the internet, though. So um, I would like to thank Innovance, Susie, and Piston for helping out with the USB keys, and uh, my fellow Rackers for helping me to set up acres of internet. 
and providing me with the little a way of doing sharing this VM. So hopefully by now you are copying or downloading the VM and I know over even the VM is being served from my laptop, so hopefully my laptop does not die mid-presentation. And um, it may take a while. So if you have a USB key and you copied the VM, please share it uh, with other people. Um, and I can come back to this layer when more people have already set up, but um, to import it uh, on VirtualBox, you will need uh, extension pack. So make sure you have that installed. If you don't have it, get off the Razor network and get on the actual conference wireless and uh, good luck with that. So um, <laughs> uh, it should be simple, hopefully, but you, you would not be able to uh, boot up another VM using Razor if you don't have the extension pack. Is everybody good here? People either downloading or copying the VM? Yes, no, maybe. If you have a, if you're done with the v, uh, USB key, can you pass it to the side so other people can get it? I will post this uh, VM on the internet after the presentation today or tomorrow. Uh, so you can download it later if you want to play with it. Uh, I guess I can explain a little bit why I created this VM. To install Razor, there are several ways of doing it, but uh, to install it and configure it, it, it probably would take over an hour. And uh, instead, I chose this way even before I knew how great the internet is here. So I'm kind of glad I have that now. But uh, this Razor VM, it has all of the things configured and should work. All right, if you're using Fusion and you're importing the VM, you need to have two uh, networks configured. The first one should be shared with my Mac or with your non-Mac. Uh, the second one should be internal. Turn off DHCP on the second uh, network. And uh, if you're using Fusion, I, I hope you've seen these interfaces before. Uh, if you're using VirtualBox, uh, you should just be able to import it, accept the defaults, and do not make any changes. It should import everything I had in there already. Uh, what, uh, what subnet should we put for it, or does it matter? I'm sorry? Which subnet? Or it, uh, it does not matter. The subnet does not matter for the second uh, net network. So I already started talking about the Razor appliance. Uh, it is built on Ubuntu server. Uh, it, it has to have two NICs, one for external, one for internal traffic. What comes, what's installed on it? I installed Razor using Knife, so it's Chef Recipes, uh, but you can install it in other ways. Uh, it also has already TFTP service, DHCP setup, uh, MongoDB comes with Razor, uh, and I have Chef server set up on the same VM, so you don't have to change anything there. There is a little bit of patching in actual Razor for the Chef server to work uh, because I do not have DNS set up on it, and Chef server requires uh, a host name instead of an IP. Instead, I'm just using IP. Uh, I also have Rackspace Private Cloud cookbooks loaded and ready to be used on the VM. So you may or may not want to use them, but the examples will follow those cookbooks. And Matt Ray later on will be going over them. It, uh, uh, the VM also has microkernel and Ubuntu server ISOs loaded on there, so you don't have to download them uh, separately. It's all there. Once you have the VM copied or loaded, the username is AnyStacker. Um, that is also the name of my website, so if you go to anystacker.com uh, after the conference, hopefully a lot of this information will be there. Password is Razor. Uh, 
The presenter did not choose to set up any other users, so everything is running as root. And uh, so switch to root. Once the VM is up, please verify that Razor is actually running. I had some issues where if I don't shut down VM properly, it, MongoDB will die on me, and then I have to do some recover MongoDB and start up Razor. But hopefully all of the VMs on USB sticks and on the website are good and live. So I intentionally switched the order a little bit because I know the copying takes a while, and so that's why I went over that stuff first. Uh, how many of you have heard or used Razor before? All right, so very few. Um, so Razor is a provisioning solution for hardware initially developed by EMC and Puppet. They also open sourced under as a Puppet Labs project. Um, you can install it manually using Puppet or Chef. Uh, your choice. I used uh, knife recipes and uh, the install went flawlessly. There is also a Vagrant Razor uh, out there. It is not work. It was not working last week with the latest version of Vagrant. So if you want to download the previous versions, I think it works. But and I believe the developer is fixing all of that. But you can also just go and check that out. It's on, available on GitHub. So about Razor. Uh, I'm sure of you, uh, a lot of you heard of, about other tools for provisioning on hardware. Um, why, why Razor? So Razor tries to keep things simple. It does a, a few nice things. It discovers real-time inventory data. Uh, if you are booting, if you're provisioning a, a new hardware, it will it can dynamically select an image for you. It has it has an API. It has plugin and architecture, so you, you can swap out MongoDB for something else, and also it comes with multiple brokers. Um, the metal to cloud application lifecycle management, that's actually done through, different, th through other tools. Razor does not attempt to manage all of that. It hands off to Chef or Puppet, or uh, coming very soon, you can just run your own script uh, and connect to whatever, hand it off to whatever other tools, so. Uh, so basically, Razor, if you have Razor set up and running, uh, there's DHCP, and once it sees that you have connected a, an additional server, it will figure out what you want to install on it, install it, hand it off to a third party tool, and. Uh, you'll have a very nice brand new server installed for you without having to do additional work. The, all of the work is upfront. So when I was preparing for this talk, I talked to the developers that work on Razor because I wanted to find out how things are and what's going on because I think that Razor is awesome. It really simplifies things, especially for those people that don't like doing manual installs. Um, if you do like manual installs, uh, this is probably not for you. Um, so, Razor is awesome, but it is still, I think right now it's 0.9 release. It is not very stable. There are a few issues with MongoDB, as I mentioned. So if it dies, you have to recover it. There is also a log files uh, that can grow quite a I think the, if you have journaling turned on, which you probably should for production, um, the log file was like over three gigs. And uh, that may, we have made this VM huge, so I had to disable that. Um, poli policy limits may not be enforced, and there are some other concurrency issues. So I think it's great for QA systems, or if you just want to set up something that does not deploy huge environments, I think it's great for that. Uh, but coming soon, and I think soon, hopefully by the end of this year, uh, they're going to release version one that will focus on stability and concurrency and scalability. So probably all of the things that we all care about. And uh, I think right now, 
I don't know if, if you tried installing Razor, but the install part is easy, but then if you don't have it configured properly with all the DHCP and all of the networking, things just start kind of not working. It's, everything is running, but you cannot boot your server or your VM. So that's developers of Razor will be focusing on making Razor really stable. What is after? What will come after? Windows support, and they will try to add AIX and Solaris support. But I don't, I don't have any timelines for that. And if you're doing OpenStack, I don't know if you care about Windows. Uh, do you, are you using VirtualBox? Yes. Do you have extension pack installed? Okay, you need extension pack installed. All right, let me back up. So for VirtualBox, if you go to VirtualBox site and go to downloads, uh, just in, uh, select extension pack. Uh, on command line, if you type vbox manage list expects, it will show you whether you have it installed or not. Uh, if you did get on Razor uh, network, please get off because you won't be able to get to the internet from it. Uh, I think I saw some USB keys being passed around. Did everybody get one? Does, does anybody need additional? Does anybody want a USB key to copy VM from? I think if you, I don't know how to set up this peer-to-peer -peer sharing. <laughs> I think the sneaker network will have to do. All right, so are we good with VirtualBox? All right. All right, how many people were able to successfully import Razor VM into VirtualBox or Fusion? Okay, a few. It's, all right, so it is a little slow. Um, I'm sorry about that. If you make sure to write down username and password, and uh, once you log in, verify that it's running, and check networks. Make sure your uh, Razor Virtual Box has two networks on it. The second network should be on 172.16.16.1. This is where Razor is going to be listening on and loading the v, um, ISOs. So once again, this, is, this configuration is just for this VM so that you can play with it without actually configuring and installing Razor yourself. Uh, if you do, if you do it from scratch and do all of the setup yourself, it's going to look different, but hopefully this VM will help you actually try it out. So Razor is a command line tool and it has a few basic commands that you need to follow, a, a basic workflow, uh, a few things you'll have to do only once, other times you'll probably be doing a little bit more often. Uh, the workflow is add a Razor microkernel, and microkernel is based on Tiny Core Linux. Um, for you on the VM, it's already added, but if you were to do it yourself, this is how you would do it. After you add a microkernel, uh, you need to add an ISO. An ISO. So in, in our case, we're using Ubuntu Precise Server, and once again, you just need to add it once. And added image will show you something like that. Uh, after microkernel and image is added, you need to uh, 
add or map the image to a built-in template. Uh, the template list is finite right now, and uh, all of the options are available. On com like if you type Razor model template, it will show you all of the options. Um, and I do not know how often this is updated. Uh, no, I think that was just copy paste. Let me see. Uh, I think I was. Can you guys see? Let's let's see if I can get to it. Oh, and I can't because I am on. All right, I cannot get to it because I'm on the wrong network, which is weird. Okay. All right, uh, is anybody downloading Razor from my laptop? Oh, it's working. All right, maybe it's just slow. Razor model template. So all of the commands are lowercase, and I guess this is not going to work very well. You guys can see that in the back? All right, so right now, oh. Resist the temptation to add uh, other commands like list at the end. It does not work. Also, if you just type razor, you will get all of the different commands that are available, like active model, BMC, broker, image, log, model, node, policy, and tag. And yes, all commands are lowercase. I did not, it was my mistake. So now we add template, and uh, or now we add model, and when adding model, it's going to ask you a few things, like uh, do you want a host name prefix to your node? In our case, when I was setting up this VM, I said, I just left it to default, um, but you can enter whatever else you like. Oh, and when you do create a new VM boot, uh, that's installed by Razor, the password will be test1234, very secure, please don't tell anybody. Ah, Good question. So in Razor, anytime you add anything, it's going to want to uh, a UUID. So um, when I type Razor image, I get a list of Razor images, and I I need to give a the UUID for Ubuntu. Other questions? I see a USB key available. All right. All right. Username is any stacker. Password is Razor. Are you on VirtualBox? All right. So to, if if you want to connect to it in service SSHing, you'll have to. I have set up port forwarding because VirtualBox is very secure and does not let you SSH into a VM from your local box. Username is any stacker and password is Razor. All right, so when adding model, you can specify uh, what would be specific to your domain. And 
uh, when you create a, when you install a new server, it will show up like node one, one or node three in, in this case because that's what I left as default. So all my servers will be, uh, will start as node. But you can call it whatever you like. And uh, feel free on this VM to set up additional models. Uh, but I, I yeah, kept it simple for now. So once it's created, it's going to show something like this. Um, everything is driven by UUIDs, so if you want to do any additional uh, tasks on it, you'll need to get them. Policies. This is how Razor knows what it is that you want to install on your server. Um, it looks at the, when a node first tries to connect to Razor, Razor gathers different facts about the node and uh, for example, like how many network cards it has, how big it is, how much RAM, and uh, based on that, you can set up a, a Razor policy. Um, in there, you can say if the Razor, uh, if the server has one network, um, and this is a very simple example, uh, give a tag of nix underscore one and enable it, and uh, any time it sees any server with one network, it's going to try to install uh, the server or this image. So uh, later on, if you want to play with it, um, I have two policies set up um, with one NIC and two NICs. The two NIC one will install OpenStack on it, and the first one will not install anything else besides base image. As I mentioned, Razor hands off uh, after install to different brokers. Right now, there are three. Uh, you will see only two on the VM because the third one is a, too new. So to see available brokers, just type Razor Broker Plugin and uh, it will give you an, uh, all, a list of them, a list of available ones. Uh, you, you can't see script one because the install did not have it yet. So I think you have to install it by hand right now to get that. Puppet Broker, if you use Puppet, use it. Uh, when you set up Puppet, uh, it will ask you for host name and Puppet version. Chef Broker wants to know all of these different things. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated. It's going to ask for uh, what, what kind of bootstrap you want to use, host name, chef version. You will have to copy and paste a validation file in it. And when you're doing this on command line, it will just walk you through it. It will explain all the different steps. For, um, it will also ask for validation client name, chef environment, uh, in our second example, we have uh, OpenStack as an environment that's already loaded on there, so you can pass that if you like. Uh, the installer script, the alternative path, and run, chef run list. In our case, I have set up all-in-one rule so that when a VM with Tunix comes up, it installs OpenStack on it. Script Broker, as I mentioned, is the newest addition to Razor Broker List, and instead of adding a plugin for every little tool that you may have internally or uh, that you want to use, instead you can just run a script and it will take care of everything. Um, it, it will have, uh, they don't have it yet, but they will add pre-install and post-install scripts and it will handle some other things as well. Sorry, you're good? Okay. So to add a broker, very similar like a lot of the other commands, Razor Broker Add, and in our case, I'm adding Chef uh, with all-in-one roles and After you add the broker, you need to associate it with a policy. 
Uh, you can add broker to your policy at the time that you are adding policy to Razor, but you can do it afterwards as well. You can also update a policy if it has already one broker added to it. So this is an example of updating uh, uh, policy. So the first long string would be policy UID, and the second long string is broker UUID. All right, so how many of you have successfully loaded Razor VM? Loaded VM. All right. You have not logged in? All right, so if you have VirtualBox, you will need to use port forwarding if you want to do it from your command line. You can also just click on the window, but I think there is some copy-paste issues if you go directly to that. Questions? Connection refused? Well, in any case, you do not have to SSH into your Razor VM. You can also just, yeah, through your GUI, you should be able to get into it. So you can do that. And username is any stacker and password is Razor. So if all else fails, just go directly through GUI. So you can at least try some of the commands out. All right, are we good? All right, if you have Razor VM loaded into your Fusion or VirtualBox, you can try installing a new VM. The way you would do that in Fusion, um, make sure your uh, Razor VM is running, add new uh, virtual machine. If you're doing this on VirtualBox, you will need to set the boot order. And in, in this case, uh, I will not in, uh, run through the OpenStack install it takes, because it takes a little longer, but if you want to install OpenStack, click Add Device and Add Additional Network, and uh, well, I should probably remove it now, but oh, uh, well, anyways, now it will have, now it will install OpenStack. Um, probably want to change Give it a little bit more memory. Now, keep in mind that this, because this is a VM, I'm not giving the real requirements for XSpace Private Cloud. Um, this is hopefully so it runs on my laptop. Uh, if you have a bigger or smaller uh, laptop, you can change it accordingly. All right, now that I think I have everything set up, let me make sure this is on the correct network. Yep. It needs to be on the internal network so that it can talk to Razor. Let me, I'm sorry? Uh, Razor network, it should be internal network and you should have a Razor network. Yes, on VirtualBox, please select internal network. All right, now uh, if all goes well, we should see, I'm trying to. So the yes. Now, if it, this worked yesterday and this morning, so if it doesn't work right now, that's because it's a live demo. <laughs> Did you say you want us to connect back to the OpenStack network to get out, or? Oh, 
Oh, yes. Yes, if you are wanting to install Chef Broker or if you're using Chef Broker, uh, good point, get on the correct network because it will have to talk to the outside world. If you are setting this up for your uh, environment, you can specify where your uh, broker lives, where to get all of the downloads and all of that so you don't have to um, go out to the outside world, but this is the very simplest case, and it is talking, it is doing a basic install. Are you in, on VirtualBox? Yes. All right, so it takes a while for, uh, well, of course, I couldn't find it. As I said, it worked yesterday. Uh, wow, uh, for for Chef Broker? Oh, uh, so all of that is... It just dropped down to eight minutes, but it's gone up and down two hours, three hours, but it's all doing it from repos. Oh, it's doing updates. You're right. So, all right. Uh, you may not... <laughs> All right, so once again, this is one of these things, I'm sorry? Oh, it's one of these things that's not going to work live, not too well anyways. Uh, I don't know why it's not working for me. Is anybody seeing Razor booting? I, I have a few. All right, so it's just not working for me, of course. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, the Ubuntu install, whether you're doing it, hmm. I don't know why it's not working because as I said, it worked this morning. And, uh, but I'm very glad it works for you all. Um, if you, if it is working for you, you should see the usual Ubuntu install. Uh, if you're using VirtualBox, there is a little pause between uh, when microkernel finds it and when the install kicks off. How many have the install going? All right, so because it has to talk to uh, internets for updates, it may not happen today. <laughs> not here anyways. If you're doing it from home, um, it takes about 10 minutes on Fusion and maybe twice as long on VirtualBox based on just, just, just from my experience, if you are installing OpenStack, it will take a while to hand everything off because it runs all of the recipes. And uh, do you have any questions? All right. It is not providing the HTTP environment. I have uh, the HTTP running. I have installed. So, I, so in, in a corporate network, yes. 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 You there is a Razor configuration file. Right. So you do need to configure the ne uh, the network part. Um, there is a Razor configuration file. Since this is not very interesting, let's take a look at it. Razor uh, is installed on opt, and let's see. So, because this instance was installed using Chef Recipes, it tells you do not modify it because it will update it for you. Uh, in our case, I deleted that part because it kept overriding where my image sort of image was and because um, I didn't configure it correctly in the first place. So depends on how you install it, it may, not, may or may not warn you about it. And uh, I think so. I think it's just a service. It's a service, uh, I think it's I-S-C-I. So 
So you should see something like that if it's running. Similarly, uh, your MongoDB needs to be running. So hopefully it just shows you something like that. Razor is uh, also should be running and you can configure it. Uh, it does, here I don't have path set up, but if you do have it, you can just check the status of Razor Daemon. Oops. So hopefully it is running. Any other questions? I'm sorry? It will be. I will also upload the VM to my site afterwards, and uh, we'll update the slide deck with the URL to that. Yes? Uh, I, think, I think so. I think it does re uh, reboot. But I don't remember, because I, I usually just go away and wait for it to install, take a nice break, especially if you are doing in a virtual environment. It is a lot faster if you are doing on hardware. Other questions? All right, since I cannot show you that it works, uh, I heard it works for other people. Um, if you have it running and you type Razor node, uh, it should hopefully be showing something by now. Once it's finished, uh, your active model some should be showing something. I have nothing. And um, unless you have other questions, I'll hand it over to Matt. You were talking about how to restrict who it gives images to? Yes. Uh, so the, there is there is a TFTP settings. Um, yes, there is a Razor IPixie file. This this file gets generated. Uh, you can regenerate on command line. Um, but I think you can configure other things in here. To be honest, I, I have not played with it because I assume that it's all on my special network when it is working. If you don't have any more questions, I think we'll take a little break and uh, then Matt will take over and talk about recipes. I'm sorry? Where is this, where is this site? Any When um when it wasn't working great before, like yes. how did you fix it? Uh, when what was not? Uh, when you said you were testing it before and it wasn't working, how did you So common errors. If you don't have DHCP server configured correctly, it will not find Razor. If you have, uh, if you are doing this on a virtual environment, um, and you have Fusion or VirtualBox DHCP running, it will confuse, and we will try to connect to the wrong one. Okay. Um, so those, like the network issues, it's always a, the network. <laughs> It always is, and uh, sometimes like when it starts booting and it tries and tries again, and you, you see it's connecting to the wrong IP, uh, just search directories for that IP and see where, why it thinks it's that. Because it should be set to the static IP. Okay, is there a way to disable the server to do that? Yes, so I, if you go, to settings, I think uh, preferences, system preference, uh, no, wrong, wrong system. Uh, 
uh, fusion preferences and you click on network, make sure all of these are unchecked. So, so your Razor VM needs to have two networks, right. one private, one public. Okay. The VM you're creating uh, can have either one or two or more NICs, but it, they all should be on private one. Okay. And make sure that the HCP is turned off. I'm sorry? Ah, so the question is how to configure it for bare metal. So in our example, I was just showing you how to configure virtual box and fusion. I think on bare metal, it's a little bit more straightforward. Uh, it is going to be in the configuration file. So obviously you have to have your private network set up for bare metal and make sure that whatever hardware uh, it needs to be imaged is on correct network. You do need to have your uh, razor configured and you need to make sure that your server is in, on correct network. Right. So if you are successful at creating AVM, uh, you will notice that if you type Razor node uh, and pass the UID, it will display the facts about your new VM. Uh, Razor is good at keeping track of all of the inventory, so you don't, ha you don't have to worry about that. Uh, and uh, I'll try to hand it over to Matt again. <laughs> yes, it is. The question was whether this is open source. It is open source, and I think they are looking for developers, for contributors. So uh, it is on GitHub. So yeah, uh, we're going to go ahead and take uh, about a five, 10 minute break and pick up at 4.15.